The reefs off the coast of North Carolina come in so many different shapes and sizes. Some of them are rocky reefs that are taller than you and I. Others are shipwrecks or structures purposely sunk to form artificial reefs. And all of these reefs form incredible habitat or home for the fish. The fish use them to find food sources. They hide from predators on the reefs. They use them as nursery grounds and they're really valuable. This particular reef that we studied, it's about 30 miles out of Beaufort Inlet. So about 30 miles off the middle part of the North Carolina coast. Mm -hmm. And it is absolutely incredible underwater. When you dive down 100 feet to this reef, you're first met with the rocky structure. It's taller than I am in places. And there's lots of overhangs, lots of crevices. And this reef is usually alive with marine life. It has schools of silvery fish, usually corralled by big predators. And there's colorful critters growing all over the reef itself. Uh, so along comes seismic testing. So e explain that. What are they looking for? Why are they doing this testing? Seismic surveying is a method that's used for geological research as well as to detect oil and gas beneath the surface. And this particular seismic survey was for geological purposes. And what it does is it emits loud sounds underwater. You can think of them as grenade explosions, so underwater explosions. And these sounds are loud, they create noise, and we wanted to know what happens to the fish when they're exposed to this noise. Mm -hmm. And Frank, when we typically think of seismic surveying, we think of how it can negatively impact marine mammals, such as whales and dolphins, and we always wondered, what about the fish? Mm -hmm. And so what happened? So you, you, you set up cameras, and how'd you do the research then? Right. Our divers couldn't go underwater during the actual seismic survey because of the noises. So what we did is beforehand, we put underwater microphones, we call them hydrophones, on the reef, as well as video cameras. And what we found when we picked these instruments up after the surveying was done, we found that four out of every five fish were no longer accounted for on the reef. We don't know what happened to the fish. We don't have after data, but what we hypothesize happened is that either the fish move from the noisy reef to a nearby quieter reef, or perhaps they hid in cracks and crevices in the reef mm -hmm. until the survey vessel moved by. Now I, I've heard, I think it's been documented, that, that fishermen have said in areas where this kind of testing is done, it's several days at least before the fish come back. That sounds possible from what you've, what you've observed so far. During the seismic surveying, there was a 78% decline in the number of fish on the reef. And what was really interesting is that for each of three days before the survey, the number of fish on the reef was relatively low during the morning and afternoon, and the number of fish then peaked in the evening. The fish were congregating on the reef. But what we saw on the day when the noises from seismic surveying were there was really different. It was not that same pattern. We saw that fish were low still throughout the morning and afternoon, but they did not peak in the evening, and so that's where we saw the greatest decrease in the numbers on the reef. Uh, but, but why is that a concern, or, or is it a concern, that the reefs are just empty for a period of time? Um, the fact that the fish left the reef in such high numbers is really concerning. It raises conservation concerns, because these fish are so important for the coastal citizens of North Carolina, fishermen and fisherwomen, divers, the tourism industry depends on it. And again, we don't have the after data, so we don't know how long this effect of lower fish numbers on the reef lasted. Mm -hmm. We assume that the fish came back, but we just don't know. So in the future, we'd like to definitely follow up on this research and try to find out where the fish went, why they left, and when they come back. Right. Can you tell, because noise travels so well underwater, any sense of how far the, the boom is heard? On our reefs, there was one reef that was 0.7 kilometers away from the survey ship as it passed by. Mm -hmm. And on that particular reef, the noise level was over 170 decibels underwater. And to compare that, that is similar to about the levels of a rock band to being near a plane engine. Uh, but the levels aren't comparable between land, so in the air and water, because it's a different medium. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to pinpoint exactly what that sound sounds like for us humans on land. What's the, the, the main takeaway? It sounds like that we have to keep in mind the effects on fish. 
Certainly. The, what's really important from our research, our main finding, is that when we move forward with seismic surveying in the future and consider allowing additional surveys to occur, we need to remember the fish. We need to not ignore them and think about how they may be influenced by these loud noises.